So since genes they encode proteins and proteins are performing the actual life functions, uh, we can have genomes and we can translate them into the proteins and compare those proteins with one another. So this is called as comparative proteomics. Uh, the collection of protein sequences encoded by genomes uh, make up the proteome of that individual. Here is uh, comparative proteomics, how it can be done. So we can have a genome sequence. Uh, we can get the predicted genes out of it and then we do translations and then that translations they give us the proteome of that individual. Uh, we can use those proteins and do some database searches uh, where we find the homologous proteins and we can predict their functions and roles. Same way uh, within the same organism we can compare those proteins by themselves so that will help us finding the paralogs within that individual. We can also do comparison of the proteins between different organisms and we can find the clusters of correlated proteins uh, in terms of their sequences and in terms of their functions. So first we do all against all self comparison. So we can compare each protein uh, within the same proteome uh, with, with other proteins and we can identify the unique proteins and uh, we can also identify the proteins that are having those paralogs. So in this way we can identify different gene families. So uh, if we have a good match between Curie sequence and some other protein sequence, uh, we can suspect those two are the paralogs because since they are present within the same organism. Here in this example, we are having the database searches. So we are having some proteins which are aligned together. Domains are specific protein structures which are made up of specific amino acids into some particular structure. So we call them as domains. So here we have those proteins which are similar to one another. So as they are sharing the similar domains, we do that uh, sequence similarity searches uh, with a software. We call it as a uh, BLAST. I will talk about that later. And then we have some parameters uh, which are called as PRE. So normally P or a low E is taken as a good score. So this ratio to be say for example if, if we have a good match we can have some um, range of P that should be less than P by E ratio should be less than 10 power minus 20 and then it keeps on decreasing if we go down to the other similar sequences. So in cluster analysis, we make the proteins which are quite similar to one another. So we make their groups or clusters. Uh, clustering is uh, to sort out the relationship between those proteins and clustering classify the proteins uh, based upon some objective criteria. For example, we can have some E value cutoffs. Uh, we can also look into the distances in the alignment. So the proteins which are more similar, uh, they will be grouped together and distant proteins, they will be grouped uh, away from them. So in this way, we can have subgroups our clusters uh, in our data. Um, there are different clustering methods. So first is clustering by subgraph. So here we take each sequence as a vertex and uh, the alignment scores between them are uh, taken as edges. So vertices are basically uh, when we uh, have some graphs, uh, we, we need to connect them. So individual items are dots. Uh, we can call them as vertices. And the, and the link between two vertices, they are called as edges. So here um, on the vertices, we put our sequences and on the edges, we put our alignment scores. And then we do some trimming. Normally what we do is we remove uh, the weak edges. So if we have high P or um, P to E ratio is high, uh, we will remove them. So here in this diagram, we are representing that clustering. We have those vertices, which are proteomes here. We can have edges, so edges are these connections between them. So these edges are, are alignment scores. The thickness of edges relates with the small uh, P2E value. And if they are weakly correlated, like the values are greater than 10 power minus 6, so then uh, they are not connected. Dashed are where, where we have loose connections. There is another technique clustering by linkage. So it's similar to the previous one, except we remove the ones which are, uh, which are not linked. And then we should have uh, uh, the, the remaining uh, subgraph should have at least two thirds of the edges. So same criteria, except there is one new point. 
Uh, linkage is done in which uh, we group those proteins uh, which are correlated with multiple sequence alignment. We align them and then we calculate their distances and then from using those distances we create the distance matrices and from those distance matrices we make their trees. Uh, the method we use is neighbor joining method. We'll talk about that later. So here we have those linkage single linkage cluster analysis results. So we have those proteomes which are present in the end of the, those trees which we call them as leaves. They are uh, the closely related ones are connected with one another and then uh, we have uh, this, this arrangement is circular arrangement and then this arrangement is typical binary tree arrangement. So here we have clearly seen that we have come up with two big clusters and then within those clusters we find some further groups or subclusters. So core proteome is uh, when we do all against all comparisons uh, we came to know about the uh, proteins which are duplicated and then uh, it also tells about uh, the proteins which are uniquely present in that organism so we call it as a core proteome. So here in this diagram uh, we compare the core proteome with the total number of genes. So here we have for example in bacteria we have 1700 genes, 1400 are the ones which are gene families so that actually represent the core proteome in this column and then we have those number of duplicated genes. So we see here that in worm we have 18,000 genes, almost half of them and they are in the shape of gene families and then there are rest of them are duplicated. So almost half of them are duplicated amongst them. In Drosophila we have 13,000, so 8,000 gene families and 5,536 are the duplicated genes. So genome is translated into proteome and self comparison of the proteome tells us about the uh, genome duplications and unique set of proteins in, our, uh, in an organism are called as its core proteome.